A few days ago, I got an email from Georgian OZ1MAS, who wanted to know the dimensions of the four element Yagi that I featured in a video a few years ago. It's been a great Yagi, and is one I occasionally use for portable VHF field days. It was based on a design from W5TX, who at that time had an extensive website on this and other VHF Yagis. Anyway, it seems that that website's gone and the dimensions, well, I couldn't find them anywhere else on the web. So for others wanting to build this four element Yagi for two meters, here's the dimensions, which I'll measure off mine. First of all, the total length of the boom is about 1.2, 1.25 meters. That's because there's a fair bit of overhang and I didn't bother to cut it off. This is the reflector, the driven element, the first director and the second director. We'll first of all start with the element spacing. Here at the reflector end is zero centimeters. At the driven element end is 34.5 centimeters. At the first director is 51 centimeters. And then there's quite a bit of wider spacing to the second director which is out at 92 centimetres. So the second director is 92 centimetres from the reflector. As far as the element lengths go, the reflector is 105 centimetres. The driven element is 101 centimetres end to end. Um, and this is a Yagi which I think I've optimised for about 144-145 megahertz uh, for the SSB portion of the band. So you might want to make the dimensions a little bit smaller if you want this to be optimised for the FM end. Anyway, the first director is 91 and a half centimetres. And then the second director is 83 centimetres. So there's quite a big difference in length between the second director at 83 centimetres and the first director at 91 and a half. The elements themselves, I got them from an old TV antenna, about 10 millimetre diameter aluminium. Um, that's important because if you have thicker or thinner elements, then the other dimensions change a little bit. One of the beauties of the W5TX antennas is the direct feed from 50 ohm coax cable. Here I've got a ballon, it looks like about five or six turns of RG58, which is the feed line itself, round over a pipe about 30 millimeters or so diameter, and that's just protected with the insulating tape. The center of gravity for the antenna which is important if you want to mount it on a mast, is between the driven element and the first director. Now the boom itself, it's about 15 millimeters square aluminium. I'll do a close up of the antenna so you can see the construction technique. Hope that helps. A quick description of the antenna. Highly recommended. I've had contacts of six or 700 kilometers just with five watts on two motors SSB. So it's definitely something I'd recommend if you want something small, light, and easy to build for a VHF field day. Or if you're looking for a small antenna at home that looks pretty much like an old TV antenna, then something like this on your chimney would be great for two motors SSB. If you're going to use it on FM, as I mentioned before, you'd want to shorten the elements a little bit and mount it vertically polarized. A problem with vertical mounting is if you've got the mast right there and it's metal, then that's gonna play havoc with the elements, the radiation pattern, the gain, and detune the thing, etc. So don't do that. Either use an insulated material as a mast, vertical, or have a metal horizontal standoff like this to stand the antenna off the main mast. 